really excited about today's math activity. For math today, we are doing a problem solving activity that's called a three act task. You guys may remember a while ago that we've done a three act task before and it was called the cookie monster. Let me refresh your memory. Right, so in the Cookie Monster three act test, we wondered a lot of things, we came up with a problem to solve, and then we worked through the different acts to learn more information that will help us solve the problem. Today, we are doing a new three act task called the Snack Machine. To do this, you might need to pause this video at various times to go back to your seesaw activity and fill some things in. But don't worry, you can use the orange draft button to save your work on seesaw when you come back to this video. Up first is act one. In act one, we are introduced to the situation, we brainstorm a question to solve, and we estimate various answers. So in this video, we see a little girl get a bag of Muncho chips from a vending machine. She puts in some coins, orders the chips, and then she gets some coins back. Since we can't brainstorm a person, I went ahead and decided what question I would like us to study today. How much change did the girl get from the snack machine? Here is my recording sheet for the three-act task called the snack machine. Our question worth solving is, how much change did she get back from the snack machine? Now, we just saw the video, so our job in Act 1 is to make an estimate that we think is way too high, one that we think is way too low, and one that we think is just right. So, an example of a too high amount, I know that she got some change, so she probably did not get $100 back. I also know that my answer should probably be either cents or dollars because we're talking about money. An amount that's too low, well, I know she got some change back, so she probably did not get zero dollars. That seems way too low. Now, I need to think of an amount that I think she got back that's just right. Then when I'm done, I'm going to click this orange check mark to save my draft and go back to the video. Pause the video here and complete that task now. Now we're on to act two. <laughs> In Act 2, we unwrap this problem little by little while we learn new information that will help us. Here's our first piece of new information. Okay, so the Munchos cost 60 cents. That's a pretty good deal. Now, let's see how much money she put into the machine in the first place. So now we need to go back to our seesaw activity and record these two amounts. I just finished act two, so now I can press the orange edit button to go back to my activity. Act two says show your thinking. How much did the munchos cost? Well, I know from the picture that the munchos cost 60 cents. Then how much money did she deposit? Well, we just watched the video, so we know that she deposited 80 cents. Now before I continue, I need to try to solve this problem based on the information I already have. I can make a drawing. I can do an equation. There's lots of ways to solve the problem, but I want to give you one little hint. 
If I go over here to the shapes tool, there are many different shapes in here, but one of the shapes that you'll notice is a hundreds block, a ten stick, or ones cube. We could substitute base ten blocks for coins. So if I wanted, I could add ten sticks to my drawing to help me solve this problem. If you would like to use that tool, I encourage you to do so. Once again, let's save our draft with the orange check mark. Pause the video and complete that now. All right, now that you've done out the math and you have an answer that you think is correct, we can move on to Act Three. <laughs> Act three will always show us the answer to our question. Then we get to reflect back on our work and see if we were correct or not. Ah, so she pulled out two dimes and we've studied money already so we know that dimes are worth 10 cents. That means I can just skip count by tens and figure out the answer. 10, 20. She got back 20 cents. Our last job here on our seesaw activity is to write down the correct answer and decide if we were correct or not. Now that we finished act three, we need to put our answer in the box. Since I'm not actually going to write the answer because I'd like you to do it on your own, I'm gonna use this star to show you that this is the area that I'm talking about. Then, once I'm done with that, I need to look down here. Do I circle the check mark because I got the answer correct when I solved it? Or do I circle the X, which means I did not get it correct the first time? You'll notice that I haven't solved the problem or written down the answer, because I would like you to try it on your own. Then when you are done, press the green check mark to submit your work. That was tricky. The real fun of these three act tasks is solving the problem step by step. If you watch the whole thing all at once, it kind of takes away the fun of unwrapping the problem little by little and uncovering new clues that help you to get to the right answer. It's also really nice because it doesn't really matter if you get the answer right the first time or not. That happens all the time in the real world. The real skill in solving problems is to look back at how you came up with your answer, notice if you made any mistakes, and fix it so that you can do a better job next time.